Hello everyone, I'm Steve. Mark's out at the moment, and this is Smokey Steve. And Mark, welcome, or welcome back, and happy Thursday. I hope you're being safe. There's germs everywhere. Everywhere there's germs. Even in the house by yourself. You can't be too safe. Um, seriously, I hope everyone is doing well, and safe, and healthy. Um, just keep doing what you're doing. Stay hunkered down. Um, we're all in this together. Okay? So, today we're kind of doing, I guess, a follow-up. Um, life after caretaking, life after caregiving. Um, and what I wanted to talk about today specifically, let me get my kerchief off, um, was the notion of e-begging, uh, being manipulative, uh, misleading people, uh, pretty shamelessly e-begging, actually. And so, there, there's a channel I follow, which you, you may be familiar with, some of you may be familiar with as well. I'm aware of the ring light, I'm going to try to watch for glare. Um, and the channel just recently changed its name, actually, today. It was um, Cynthia and Thomas Beaumont. Now, uh, about a week and a half, maybe two weeks ago, Tommy passed away. He had a rather relatively brief, uh, very hard-hitting um, set of medical problems. He had esophageal cancer, and he had had some treatment, and he got better, and then he got a lot worse, and then he ultimately passed. So, Cynthia, who is now the channel, and the new channel name is uh, Jersey Girl Journals, so it's just going to be her, um, is a new widow, and she's coping with what's going on. Um, we all grieve differently. We all um, process uh, feelings differently. Um, all sorts of things. There's been some who've suggested um, that it doesn't look like she's grieving very hard because the channel has gone on. She's gone on to make videos that were kind of silly, kind of novel. Um, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe she cries in the shower. Uh, it's not for me to, to guess. So I don't want to dwell on the circumstances really that led up to the, her current circumstances. What I wanted to talk about was the kind of behaviors that are going on now since she's found herself to be a single person having to look after herself. Now, all of us in our lives, and if you haven't, you're fortunate, many of us, I'll say, have found ourselves in circumstances where we were the only person we had to rely on. If you're fortunate, you don't have to do it for very long. Um, but it's challenging when you have to rely on your own resources, whether they're financial or emotional, your own stamina, your own willpower, um, in any sort of way. But... Um, Cynthia has a, a different way of going about getting her needs met. So I made a few notes, like Chantal, and um, I'm using Mark's phone, so if it cuts out, there's going to be might a, a clip here and there, so just we'll bear with. Uh, so as to showing off things maybe that viewers send, Mark and I get gifts from people. People send us stuff, and the stuff they get is really... Nice. It's thoughtful. They watch the channel. We outright asked for postcards because we were putting together some stuff for our backdrop, which is endlessly in the works. Um, so we put put that out there. Um, and we show off when people send us stuff. Now, Cynthia does the same thing. And I've been a watching her channel for years um, for a number of different reasons. The reasons have always changed over time. Um, and she would, you know... My friend got me this, this one got me that, isn't so lovely, thank you, show the card, whatever. Um, so that's no grave sin, exactly. Um, her fans, she would always say her fans sent it to her. I always find it weird when people say fans. Like, I don't, I have viewers. You guys are watching, you're viewers. You might not even be subscribed, I don't know, I'm mad at you, maybe you want to watch first. You know, it's okay. Um, but when Tommy got sick, which is stressful, um... He was still working, but there was no diagnosis yet. And the shopping, she has a thing with shopping. She likes to shop. And she shops by mail because her mobility is not stellar for any number of reasons. And she used to make a lot more trips to New York and would go by bus. And now she's shopping a lot more at home. So um, there's plenty of footage. Actually, half of it was deleted um, a while back of Cynthia opening boxes, uh, beauty boxes, boxes from Macy's, like those $50 a month and you get $100 worth of crap, um, Ipsy, uh, Allure, um, little Japanese toys meant for 13-year-old girls, all sorts of crap like that. Pusheen, those stuffed animals, like a, a $40 crate of them. 
st stuff in this vein. Stuff that you wouldn't call essentials. You know, you can't really, I guess, you can't really wear it. Sometimes you could eat the stuff she gets. But not things that are life-sustaining, okay? It's things that seem, in light of our, all of our circumstances now, maybe a little bit silly. Um... But shopping might be a way that, that she copes. And everyone, like I said, copes differently. Maybe it, I think it's her fix. I think it, it gets her off or gets her distracted or does something for her. Because the frequency with which she does it is staggering. But it pairs up with something else that's kind of going on with her. Um, food also goes along with that, too. She would do very large hauls. And they don't drive. Um, at the time, they didn't drive. Cynthia doesn't have a license. And I don't think Tommy drove either. And they didn't have a car. Um, their choice. So they had to do like Instacart, Peapod, things like that, and they would get $300 worth of food at a time. Now this is at the point where um, her husband was becoming ill and really wasn't eating very much, so the food was going somewhere. $400 hauls, really big ones, and then of course beauty boxes and a lot more stuff. And I can appreciate if you're a very large channel getting boxes in, or, or if you're a big mukbanger, like if you're Nikocado Avocado, who cares if you spend $200 on takeout, because your video is probably going to make quite a bit more than that. But, you know, it wouldn't make sense for, like, Mark and I to, to buy an expensive product just to show it off on the channel, because we probably, at this point in our channel, would not make um, that amount back showing it off. We better damn well like what we're buying for ourselves, because, you know, it's not, that's not how the finances work at this stage of the game. So, okay. The, she's, she's going on with her life um, at this point as someone who is now going to be the caretaker. Now, the worse off he gets, I think the more scared she gets. And now the Amazon wish list goes into the description of the videos. Um, and there's items on the Amazon wish list. There's some essentials. There's Ensure. There's Boost. Things that, that her husband would need when he was ailing. At least she believed was really, you know, essential. So she put those on there. There was also, like, a Hello Kitty thing. There was a couple big screen TVs. Um, I mean, it's called a wish list, I suppose. Um, directing people... By putting it in your, in your description area, you're directing people to go there. So that says to people, I want you to go here and think about buying me a TV. <laughs> Which, hey, whatever. Act to the Amazon wish list. Um, there were some, you know, things that would have been helpful in their current circumstances and some things that seemed a little frivolous. But again, wish. It's no big deal. Um, now, they have had issues, like like a lot of channels do, with, with haters, with other, you know, people who send unsavory mail. And Cynthia and Tommy, for reasons known only to them, put their actual physical home address on their YouTube page. It's been done. There's a couple people, I think, that we correspond with, who are closer friends with, who have actually our address, um, but otherwise we have a P.O. box. So it was gone up and then it was taken down out of, um, for any, I forget what reason, it probably wasn't even true, but then when Tommy was ill, the address goes back up because Tommy likes to get cards and I think Cynthia likes to see if there's anything in them. So, so now there's another way to get it. Then the PayPal link shows up, <laughs> and it's called a tip jar. So there's now a few you can either buy mail through PayPal or through gift, give her something. Um, why? Because she's Cynthia. It's not Christmas. It's nobody's birthday. No reason. Buy me Ensure so I can buy myself some gypsy jewelry. Um, I don't know. So, again, ultimately, Tommy passes away, and the circumstances of which are well documented and discussed other places, so I'm not going to go into that. Um, she's about seven days out, and in the first few videos, she's, she's having a time of it, and in the video where it happened. And I can't guess at her emotional state at, like, where she's at. Like I said, people greet differently. The one thing she is expressing quite openly is desperation. Whether that's desperation out of self-preservation, des you know, what it, desperation to keep her channel alive, desperation to get ads from people watching, which is where I think kind of that direction goes. Um, and she's pulling out all the stops to milk anything out of her channel at the moment. And I can appreciate that she, you know, it's her only source of income coming into the moment, according to her, at least temporarily. But 
I don't know. So let's take a pause here for one second, because Mark and I don't live in a bubble, and because I've did a series on caretaking, should have been care. I'm kicking myself so hard, because caregiving is the better word for it. You caretake horses and houses, but I, I screwed up in the beginning, and I had to keep going with it, so I called the whole series caretaking, and I'm sorry. But anyway, because we did that, people randomly send us, like, emails, sometimes, and comments about Cynthia and her channel. And, you know, it's it's whatever, but we'll, we'll get an email or two, or a couple messages on Messenger. So just on, on the topic of where Cynthia is with her health and finance, with her finances at the moment, this was sent to us. Hey guys, love your channel. Well, thank you. Um, I sent this woman gifts plus cash. Now I feel like a fool. All caps. I heard he, Tommy, was a state worker and she comes into this amount of money from his life insurance policy. Is this true to your knowledge of them? I've lost my beloved mother in February 2020, and I still can't pull myself together. I can't even eat a full meal. She is eating for a family of five at this point. Happy Easter and anniversary to you both. Thank you. Uh, be well. Be safe um, for both you and your families. So, I know nothing specific about Cynthia Beaumont's personal finances. Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm not really particularly interested outside of the fact that I wonder where the money's going exactly. Um, primarily because, well, let's, let's just jump right into e-begging, shall we? Um, so the e-begging, e-begging in general, and again, Cynthia did not invent begging people for stuff on YouTube. She is not the first person to do it. I don't even think she's the worst person to do it. Um, and looking on the outside in, if you're a new viewer, you see a recent widow struggling getting by, who has limited resources, according to her, and is in a rough spot. So that pulls at your heartstrings. You know, that, that does that. But in context, things are not as, uh, I'm not as sympathetic when you look at things in context. So at the moment, the e-begging is, is manifesting through a series of mukbang videos. Um, she goes through the first few days after Tommy passed away, and it's it's hard to watch. She's grieving. She's going in and out, crying jags. People have suggested that she's crying, but there's no tears. Now, I checked with Mom on this. Mom, you're watching, right? My great aunt, Eleanor, okay? She could not cry. She had whatever that illness is. It's got a long name. I think it starts with E or something. I'm probably totally wrong. And she couldn't cry. It, it, it's she was unable to even if and she was a tender heart too. But tears were not physically able to be produced. This could be the case with Cynthia. It's reasonable doubt, I guess. So, you know, I'll I'll leave that there. Just so to say that she's faking it when she's upset, I can't say because I know a real life person I've met who's had the the thing where you don't you don't really cry. Um, so I'll cut her. We'll get the benefit of the doubt on that. Um, the the crying, the I don't have any food in the house. Now the videos after that start to go into mukbangs, and the mukbangs are canned soup and tuna sandwiches because woe is me has nothing around to eat. Now, how do any of us get food in times like this? Uh, times are tough, you know. For, for a lot of us, it's hard to get to the store and get back and forth. Many people are out of work. I've been very fortunate um, that I've, I've been able to work from home and, and Mark's been able to continue working, but that's not the case for everybody. Um, it is, this is not a silver lining for her situation because she's a new widow in the middle of a pandemic, but everything is being put on hold right now. Rents, utility payments, credit card bills, She's right now in a moment where a lot of things can be put off for a little while. So there's some breathing room to make a plan of how to go forward. And that hasn't been done yet from, from what I see. From what I see right now, it's a person in their house, not going out, waiting and expecting for somebody to come in and fix it. Somebody to send food, to send medical supplies, to send a vaccine. Um, She's very afraid of going out, afraid, uh, we'll go with afraid, that's what she, you know, she seems to say, doesn't want to go, needs an N95 mask to freaking go out in the hallway. Um, find a nurse and give it to her. So, I don't know. 
I don't know. So another <laughs> another set of messages came through, and it was talking about Cynthia talking about not having a lot of food in the house. And this one came through. Um, and again, we get these randomly, sometimes on Facebook Messenger and sometimes emailed. And this one was regarding one of Cynthia's reviews of uh, Real Housewives of New Jersey, I think. And this was sent to us, and it was, quote, Oh, dear God, did you see the video she just posted? Grilled cheese for dinner again. O-M-G. She's talking about some housewife of New York on Instagram. She posted a photo of their dinner. She had potatoes, a vegetable, and meat. Cynthia said, must be nice to be rich. All I got is a loaf of bread. I don't have no money. I'm poor. Uh-huh. So, yeah. Now, again, things are things are tight. Things are poor. And maybe, I, maybe she does only have a loaf of bread at the moment. But we reap what we sow. So, um, when you put, when you lay that against buying beauty boxes, <laughs> money spent on things that are not necessary, things that, money that could have been saved earlier for something later, you can't always plan for illness. And if you're a paycheck to paycheck type people, Mark and I are paycheck to paycheck type people, we miss two, three paychecks. You know, you got to go into savings really, really quickly. What savings you can make when you're living paycheck to paycheck. So I can appreciate their circumstances. Um, but she had a 25-year heads up that he might get, get sick a little sooner than her. Um, that things like, you know, could be different for her. And if she was going to be unwilling or unable to work at any given age, then she was going to need some source of income, some kind of insurance, some regular access to shelter and food. And if, and if her husband wasn't going to be able to provide that for her, I mean, he wasn't going to live to be 140. So what was she going to do? Um, self-reliance, some self-reliance skills she's good at. Uh, which brings me to, you know, oh, and, and please, please, Cynthia, and, and this, you know, not just for, Cynthia, you can go outside, you can go to the, I put I put my kerchief on, and I went to the bodega around the corner, and I got a soda and some smokes, and I came back, and I washed my hands. It's not the zombie apocalypse out there. You know, it's people aren't diving at you, trying to breathe in your face and wish you dead. It's scary times, yes, but people aren't out to deliberately make each other sick, and staying inside is not, is an overreaction to that. If you, you know, you can open the window, um, but Cynthia has a propensity for making things a little dramatic, like that glitter bomb that was supposed to blind her, you know? So, again, context is very important with all of this. So, um, the people skills that she does have, she exercises, I think, a lot with her audience. And, again, she didn't invent this. There's some other really good ones out there. They seem to be middle-aged and older women, though there's a dude out there, Elvis something. I've heard things. But she is kind of manipulative, which is a people skill, if you can call it that. Um, I don't want to dig too far back into when Tommy was alive. Um, something that she would have said a while ago was, and this was to kind of keep the tone of, that she wanted, you know, we have no family, we're on our own. You know, to reiterate to, you know, her husband that, you know, I'm the only one who cares for you, you have no extended family. And it was a very lonely um, way to, to end a life. Um, I just, I can't, there's so many notes. It's just, I didn't even want to take notes. I just wanted to rant, but let me, okay. I need a cigarette. Hold on. Damn, they're over there. Anyway, we'll just go on. Ta I'm prone to tangents on this particular topic. Um, okay. So manipulation. We don't have a car. They don't have a car. Okay. It's hard to get around without a car. And they live next to New York, next to New York. Um, not in the city. People in New Jersey drive. People in New Jersey drive. Cynthia is, you know, is there any physical reason her or Tommy couldn't have gotten a license and driven a car? And people say, oh, you don't need a car there. Apparently you do, because at every other breath, it's, if you don't have a car, you have to this. And a car was left to them when her mother passed away. It's not that they didn't have a car, it's that they didn't have driver's licenses. And if you say you don't need a car, well, you do if you're old or disabled, like your mom. And he was old, and you're disabled, according to you. So it would have been a great resource to have, but it would have taken some 
I don't know. Ever? I mean, that's just the look on the surface. Maybe there were medical reasons neither of them could drive. Maybe they had history of seizures or... Or do you, who knows? There's any number of reasons. But it's another one of those, oh, they can't get out of the house. I'll send something to them. Or to her, frankly. Um, injuries. My knee, my wrist, my back, my neck, my foot, my TMJ, my jaw. I have an earache. I have a sinus infection. I have a sore throat. Um, I can't stand too long. I can't sit too long. Um, you know, uh, things, things like that. There's always a reason not to do something. For every... Instead of having, like, a solution for every problem, there's, like, a problem for every solution. Maybe this could help out. Maybe this would be a good thing. Maybe this would be useful to help setting your life back up so you can get on with things. Oh, no, it sounds too hard. Oh, no one answered the phone. They always want to make you beg. Calling a person who you need something from <laughs> is not begging. It's making a phone call. But that's neither here nor there. So, and again, with the lucky to get a loaf of bread thing, I just, ugh. And lucky to get a loaf of bread. Oh, she only has bread in the house. Moldy bread and tuna. And it's not her favorite kind of tuna. It's this brand of tuna that I like. No hint, hint there to send a crate of tuna. No fresh fruit in the house. Next day, fruit shows up. Um, it's, I mean, I don't know. I don't feel like... It's like, line up your subscribe your fans and ask for volunteers. Who wants to subsidize me this week? Every last... 14,800 of them could claim her as dependent on their friggin' taxes, honestly. Um, I just think it goes too far. I think it goes too far. And the poor pathetic me thing is very calculating at this time because the first quick defense is she just lost her husband. Um, and she did just lose her husband. But this is how it's spilling out. And it doesn't reflect well on her. And to the extent that her channel was good, this is going to not look good. It looks desperate. The mukbangs, the sweat into the oldies, the reviews, just throwing everything at the wall to see what sticks. It's good to have diverse content. I mean, Mark and I have diverse content. God, we did, what are we, unboxings? I do stuff like this, and watch videos like this for hours just to talk about them. That doesn't say much about me, but not, that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, we, like all sorts of random crap. So there's, you can have diverse content. I know channels that narrow it tend to usually do better, but um, but I have a full-time job. This is her bread and butter. So I think she's trying to find something that'll click and then kind of roll with it. What's the direction of her channel? And having changed her name is a start, too. Um, somebody had suggested that she was trying to erase memories of, of her husband via the channel, that his name came off the mailing address, and then his name came off the wish list, and then his name came off the, the channel, and it's not even there anymore. Um, videos of him are still there. There's old videos I like of Tommy and Cynthia. I like when they used to bicker, you know, when their life was still fun, you know, up until maybe about three years ago. So, no, I don't think she's trying to erase the memory of her husband. Um, I think that's a little bit cynical even for me. But, um... <laughs> ah, so three pound bags of jelly beans on Amazon. Um, of all the things to put back on your wish list in tough times when you're down to a loaf of bread is a three pound bag of jelly beans. Um, that'll make me feel better. That'll fix everything. That'll make everything okay. Right. You know what would make me happy? Do that. Watch my video and send me those jelly beans and I will feel a whole hell of a lot better whole hell of a lot better. So, aside from then being manipulative as a people skill, and you have to find your marks very easily. Usually, if you want to find a good mark, you mention thanking God a lot. If you really want to get them, you mention Jesus. Because it's manipulating people who are very giving. The people who give to someone like Cynthia are not stupid. I don't think that they're... When I say marks, I don't mean that they're suckers. What I mean is... These are the kind of folks that are prone to donating to people, that look out for other people probably, and give very freely, and probably don't expect anything in return. Maybe a thank you, if she can find the card with your name on it. But that's one thing. But presenting yourself as needing something when maybe you don't, or so obviously spending the money you have on wants, and then saying you have no money for your needs, 
and dropping hints that the people watching your videos should send those to you is, is, is something very different, I think. You know, my two cents, what do I know? You know, I'm just some guy with a cheap camera. You know me. Um, so after the manipulation comes, you know, here comes the gift. And then there comes the issue of gratitude. Now, gratitude is um, usually expressed in words and actions, maybe. Um, and again, like I had mentioned, there was some criticism that um, she had done some videos recently with gifts. And I do believe, I don't know, I don't think she's fake acting in, when she talks about going through gifts and cards and sympathy cards people sent for when Tommy passed away. Um, that would be hard for me to open up if Mark had passed away and it had been like even two weeks and people, it like reopens the wounds for whatever they were. So um, that would be challenging. Uh, there was gifts that were sent and the cards weren't matched up with who sent what. So it was like a general thank you. Um, and let's see the first in ungrateful moment I remember seeing, and it started to twist my opinion a little bit, Amazon fresh care package. Cynthia was on a weight loss journey for the umpteenth time. God bless her. I'm in the fight with you. I'm not judging you. We can, you can hate me, but I still, I still relate to you. God help me. Um, at least in that way. And Cynthia picked up the box, went through it, and ripped everything in there to shreds. This is too many calories. It was 300 calories. Square that against the entire pizza she ate for attention the other day, okay? Um, so, and then, <sighs> ingrateful. Enrico, I have no bread. Enrico has bought her bread recently. Um, but it was too high in calories, and it was the healthy kind that she didn't like. Um, Betty had gotten her some oranges, but they were too hard to peel. When she didn't have fruit, somebody got an edible arrangement. Have you ever bought an edible arrangement? Something about this size is probably 50 damn dollars. It would have been nice if it was dipped in chocolate, the fruit wasn't dipped in chocolate. Now here's the thing, here's the disconnect. I've had edible arrangements delivered. The fruit is fantastic, I'm not plugging them. Who wants anyone to come to your house now? Um, and I've had them dipped in chocolate, and they're very good both ways. Chocolate is nice. Now, if someone had sent me an edible arrangement, I might think, hmm, I, I'm aware that they make those dipped in chocolate. I like ones dipped in chocolate. That might be a nice memory. And I would say thank you for the fruit one. That's good. And if I like it in chocolate, maybe later I'll melt some of my own. But I'm not going to say, before I even say thank you, oh, I really like them dipped in chocolate. I'm not complaining, though. You're complaining. You're complaining. You're being ungrateful. You're being ungrateful. Um, what else? There was a bunch of other ungrateful crap I wrote down. Um, the bread and Rico bot. Uh, the tuna I have isn't the kind of tuna I like. I think I mentioned that before. Um, you know, YouTube... If YouTube is going to be a full-time job for any of us, um, it's, it's not for me, at least not now, unless this goes viral. Then, you know, we'll talk. But... If you want full-time income, you have to put in full-time hours and create full-time content. Um, the content that she's making is arguably lazy. I mean, I'm not saying, have you seen my videos? It's, the camera barely moves. I don't move. <laughs> Marks are a little more filming here and there. But there's not really a lot of creative editing. There's not a lot of graphics. There's not a huge amount of effort paid attention to lighting or anything else like that. Um, so... If you want to make enough to live on a month in, you know, 20 minutes from the most expensive city, one of the most expensive cities in the world, um, you got to step up, you got to step up your game. And if you can't do that and you can't support yourself with that, then you have to look elsewhere to see what other ways you can support yourself, whether it's getting government assistance or going on disability or getting <gasps> a job or, you know, anything else. And I think... Beyond that, so we see, we did manipulating, we did ingratitude, we did e-begging. Um, entitlement, that's the last piece. Now, mind you, I should have said this in the beginning, you could take out the name Cynthia Beaumont for what I'm talking about and probably insert a thousand other people on YouTube, 10,000 other people on YouTube. You know, don't hate the player, hate the game is probably a better way to kind of summarize that. But I'll give you an example a final example of hers that doesn't have to do with getting packages in the mail. She put out a tweet um, 
Again, that was brought to our attention. I don't solicit information about Cynthia Beaumont from people. This just, this just happens to come. And a tweet was forwarded to me um, relating to her having insurance. Her insurance was very recently cut off. She was covered through Tommy's employer. Tommy doesn't work there. He passed away. And the 1st of April, the insurance was cut off. She was on his. Um, she tweeted at Governor Murphy. She lives in New Jersey. You said all of us are family. Well, my husband worked for North Bergen Schools, who she tagged, for over 15 years. Just died. She gave the date. I found out my health insurance was canceled for one. I got no notice. How can my, I think she meant to write state, do this to me during a pandemic? And then she hashtagged her friend, the mayor, Nikki Sacco, um, and hashtag help me. So there's options for people in her situation. I think Cynthia has kind of a helplessness streak in her. Someone's going to have to do it for her. She's not going to do it for herself, I don't think. Um, if you have no insurance, you call the department, you know, you go to the county office, you know, in whatever state you're in, they have Medicaid. She won't get Medicare unless she's disabled. And then she'll have to wait another couple years probably. And then maybe even have to purchase it if you get A and then sometimes you get B and then you have to buy D. Medicare changes time to time. Um, she would get Medicaid if she had no income. If she had too much income from Medicaid, then the, she had a life changing event life-altering event when her husband passed away, she'd be eligible um, to go onto the marketplace such that it is left and purchase insurance based on her income, which might mean zero, um, you know, contribution on her part anyway, or very, very low. So she has some options available to her. They might have even offered her to pay COBRA, but I mean, I can't blame her for not wanting to pay COBRA. What is it, like $900 a month to keep your insurance? And she was the spouse too. But I don't know why... This is confusing to me. I'm not asking these questions because I know the answers. I'm asking these out loud. Would or why would a school district who had an employee who passed away, who was married, continue to pay for the insurance of the surviving spouse? I, I, I don't know. Or for how long? I mean, it ended at the end of the month where he had, he had stopped working and had passed away. Um, but the idea that I deserve a little bit better than everybody else. Because, you know, I have it a little bit, at the same time, I have a little bit harder than everybody else. You know, feeding tubes much? Oh, you have a kid, it's not that hard. I have an adult, it's much harder. I know. I, you can get food, I don't have a car. You know, I can't get out. You know, I can't go around the corner, I have a disability, I can't do that. I don't want to go out by myself, I might get kidnapped. You know, you don't know who's coming in the door. I don't want a visiting nurse coming in, I don't want this. Da, 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 da. You know, there's always a reason why something helpful can't be done. There's always a reason why it should have been done for me. Um, it's always somebody else's fault. Like, I don't know. So you package that all together and you get the profile of a person who is extremely difficult to like. <laughs> um, <clears throat> now my hope going forward is that somewhere, maybe in the next few years, um, she finds her way back to the channel that she was originally that I used to like. You know, I would love to see Cynthia Beaumont lose 100 pounds, drop the cane, and start hustling around to Macy's again. Sure, she had a small life. It was shopping and and unboxings and whatever. But if she's not doing it into debt and she can get out and get some fresh air, you know, what is quality of life for a you know, disabled woman living in New Jersey at the age of 50? If she can get out and do a little shopping and take the bus, you know, whatever, um, maybe Enrico can go with her. So she could have a life after this. Uh, but not at this rate, not this way. You can't e-beg us a, a, a living. It, it's not going to work. Um, and people, these the emails and the messages we get have increased in the last week. Because um, people are noticing. And they come from people who say they used to be fans. So I have no warning. She has like four to five times the subscribers I do. <laughs> I can't tell her how to run a channel. She could probably have suggestions for me. However, um, I don't know that she can grow her channel this way. So these are my thoughts and my opinions on e-begging, manipulation, um, entitlement, and ingratitude. These are mine alone. Um, I don't, again, th the person I'm talking about Cynthia did not invent this. She didn't come up with this on her own. Um, this is just what I've been observing. 
and I don't know that it's good for her channel to continue doing it. I know it doesn't make for very interesting content, and I know it's also turning a lot of people off. And I only know that because the people that are turned off are contacting me. So I felt like it should be addressed. <laughs> so, Cynthia, I do wish you well. You don't have to like me. Sometimes I get annoyed at you. But despite all that, I do wish you well. Times are hard for everybody. You had something happen in the middle of it. When I say we'll all be okay, you're included in that we'll all. You count, you count too. Bad taste. Anyway, so thank you all for watching. Please do subscribe, hit the like button. You can follow Mark and I on Facebook at Smoky Steve Space and Mark or on Instagram at Smoky Steve and Mark. Our email address and our contact info is all listed down below. Thank you for watching and we will catch up with y'all tomorrow. Take care. Bye.